Hello friends, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all doing great. In today's video, we are going to be going over all of the latest news and information in regards to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. At the World Championships this past weekend, at the closing ceremony, we got a brand new trailer and a bunch of information. The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website's been updated as well, and we're going to take a look at everything so we have a crystal clear perspective going forward with this new information, what it means for the games, and to start the conversation about new exciting features in these titles. So without further ado, let's hop over and jump straight into it. As I say, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website has been updated with all of this new information. One of the things that was coming through from the trailers was the new battle system. So we can have a quick look at this. Battle with Pokemon trainers from all over the world in the battle stadium. Now, the battle stadium was kind of touched upon. It wasn't really kind of explored or explained too much. It was just shown in the trailer briefly. But there's a lot more information, as you can see here on the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website. With the battle stadium feature, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet you'll be able to use the internet to enjoy battling trainers from all over the world so confirming that there will be a battling system in place in these games. Ranked battles confirmed excellent which players have had the chance to enjoy in Pokemon Sword and Shield will be returning in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Players will be able to take on battles in casual battles and online competition modes as well. Get ready to have heated Pokemon battles with new partners you meet in the Paldea region. So this is amazing. So this is amazing. This confirms that the rank battles will become com confirmed, will be continuing in Scarlet and Violet, and also that this facility will be available for all of us on release uh, so you can see i really like the interface of it honestly i, I think it looks nice i let me know down in the comment section i'd love to hear your opinions because the sword and shield one was pretty innovative compared to what we've had and this looks really nice i like the look of it so we've got casual battles here we've got ranked battles so we're going to have a rank ladder information on the rank ladder specifics haven't been released yet but i'm sure as we get closer to the release of these games we'll get more information on that online competitions is a big one we have online competitions competitions all the time hopefully we get more in scarlet and violet but great to have and then we got an interesting one here in rental teams as well so rental teams will be a feature in these games as well and then you can see the interface there to the right as head up with an opponent so uh, it looks really nice trainer cards look like they're returning probably not i don't know if they're going to be as customizable yet but uh, we do get trainer cards so that's going to be something nice for us to take advantage of in Scarlet and Violet. So casual battles, these are lost ick battles which result in not recorded. One appearing features about these battles is that you can use any Pokemon. So yeah, just kind of standard battles like we have casual battles in Sword and Shield. Now the rank battles, in these battles you will be able to test your battle skills against Pokemon trainers from all over the world. Your rank will change depending on your battle results. Trainers are sorted into tiers based on their ranks. So at the minute you've got like Pokeball tier, Great Ball, Master Ball, uh, sorry, Ultra Ball, and then you have Master Ball tier, and that's kind of how the tiers work in Sword and Shield. So there'll probably be something similar to that. It looks like if you reach Master Ball tier, the topmost tier, you'll have a chance to vie to be the best Pokemon trainer in the world in Fierce Battles. So yeah, sounds like that is going to be the same kind of tiering system in Rank Battles. And no reason to change it, to be honest, because it does work, right? It works in Sword and Shield. It's a really simple system, and it works, and it's nice nice to see that that's transferring into Scarlet and Violet as well. It's stuff that everyone's familiar with, so it makes a lot of sense. Now, online competitions, these are competitions in which trainers can battle with other entrants. There'll be official competitions, various kinds of rules may govern these special competitions in which you compete to see how high you can place in the rankings, and then friendly competitions in the format you can hold your very own competition or join uh, one set up by other trainers so again this is transferring across from sword and shield what we can do in there and it sounds like the interface is going to be very similar which is nice because if they just update it with maybe some different things that have been wanted for the longest time in sword and shield but keep the interface the same so it's very familiar to those of us that have played in sword and shield 
that's great. It means that no one's gonna have any issues using it and it's a decent system as well. Rental teams. This feature lets you easily borrow battle teams by input and IDs and have been shared online. You'll also be able to build your own battle team and make it available for Pokemon trainers all over the world. Now, you will need a paid Nintendo online membership to use any of the battle stadium uh, facilities, but that's kind of the same that you would have in Pokemon Sword and Shield anyway. Now, the rental teams, the one thing, the one big wish I have for rental teams in Scarlet and Violet is that we get more slots. We have more available slots. I think at the minute we get like between five and six slots that you can put a rental team up. It'd be amazing if you could have more because you have so many different rule set changes. You have to overwrite your old teams and it's kind of sad having to overwrite an old team when you think, oh, I haven't got room for it anymore. And that's kind of lost then. But if you're able just to get that and generate the rental code, that'd be amazing. And you can keep it there and have maybe a nice catalog of different teams in different formats. So that would be my big thing. But that is all the information that we got about the new battle system on Skull and Violet, which is very exciting. Nice to get some information about it as well. And then the other news that we got as well was touching on terrestrial phenomenon in battles. So we got a bit more information about terrestrialization, master using the terrestrial phenomenon in battles. Terrestrialization is a phenomenon in the Paldea region that makes Pokemon shine and glimmer like gems. Terrestrialized Pokemon shine during battles too. Change your Pokemon's type and turn the table. So we know pretty much about kind of terrestrialization already, but they just delve into it a little bit deeper here. The primary feature of terrestrializing in battle is that it changes your Pokemon's type to its terror type. So kind of confirming what we already knew. Pokemon don't outwardly show their terror type until they terrestrialize. A fact that you can use this to take uh, opponents by surprise in battle. Combining terror types with different moves and abilities can open up near infinite strategic possibilities. So this is a little bit worrying for me from a, a VG perspective perspective only because I feel like in team preview to make it a bit more balanced I feel like the Pokemon should show their their terror type as well so there should be a little symbol showing what terror type that Pokemon is so you at least know what to expect going into battle from the sounds of this it doesn't sound like there's any sort of markers or indication to show Pokemon's terror type so that's something to think about I don't think it's going to make it a bad uh, gimmick but I do think this is something that might make it a little bit harder going into battles and some people may have issues with. Uh, personally, I don't. I kind of like the idea of having that surprise in battles. It's always kind of fun to have that. Not so fun when it happens to you in a battle and you get caught, off, uh, caught by surprise by your opponent, but that's something that you're gonna have to take into consideration. But by the sounds of how it's being worded here, that sounds like it is gonna be a complete mystery until it's revealed in battle. Whether that's the same in kind of ranked battles or not, who knows, we'll have to wait and see, but this is what we've got so far. Uh, you can see here the Tyranitar using uh, its uh, Terra type to turn into a ghost type in front of a Gallade, and then it dodges the close combat, which is great, and then hits it back for super effective damage with its ghost terror type move which we'll get into in a minute and is able to pick up the knockout you see this in the trailer it's really actually quite quite fun to see uh, and they did the other example with the colossal as well and um, when it turns into a water type it's terrestrialized type as water so it terrestrializes turns into a water type takes a hydro pump from rotom takes no damage at all but it's steam engine ability activates still, which is really cool. So you can combine it with different abilities and things like that, which is pretty awesome. And um, so, yeah, Terra Blast. This is what I was talking about, the new signature attack. I'm going to presume it's going to be a move that every single Pokemon can learn because terrestrialization is something that every Pokemon can do. Uh, Terra Blast, a new move that shows its power when the user is terrestrialized. Uh, Terra Blast is a normal type move that can be learned with a TM. So like I say, I think every Pokemon will be able to use this. When used by a terrestrialized Pokemon, it becomes a move of the same type as a Pokemon's Terra type and displays its amazing immense might so this is pretty cool it's probably quite a strong whether or not it gets a boost uh, when used by a terrestrialized pokemon who knows but it will change its type from normal to whatever the terrestrialized type of that terrestrialized pokemon is which is pretty cool so it, you know you're always gonna have a stab attack no matter what 
terror type you kind of turn into. Use it at the right moment to change the flow of the battle. Uh, terror Blast inflicts damage using the attack or special attack stat, whichever is higher for the user. Now, this is a really nice way to get around it as well. So whichever special attack or your attack stat is higher, that's what it will be. It'll be a special or a physical based attack, which is nice. It's got a lot of flexibility there and a lot of flexibility within how you kind of train your Pokemon stats through EVs and IVs as well. So there's a lot of kind of um, different combinations with how you can use that. Very exciting information and good news. So the other thing that we're going to talk on today before we move on is new items that can make battles even more exciting. These are items can be held by Pokemon to trigger a variety of effects. How you can use them may mean the difference between victory or uh, and defeat. Use them in conjunction with Pokemon moves and terrestrializing to achieve victory. Uh, the first item that they're talking about and got shown in the trailers again was Mirror Herb and the pop off in the venue when this got announced was nuts. I mean, I popped off pretty hard. This item's pretty sick. Uh, the herb will allow the holder to mirror an opponent's stat increases and boost its own stats, but only once. So in the trailer, you saw an Azumarill using a uh, belly drum and then the mirror herb kind of activated and it copied all the stat boosts. Um, so it's a pretty powerful item and uh, really helps to mitigate uh, an opponent taking a big advantage through maybe an opportunity to get like a sword stance off or something along those lines. Imagine using Mirror Herb on something like a Geoman Seed Xerneas to just keep pace, you know? Uh, the possibilities with it are endless and it's a really nice way to kind of keep opposing teams in check without them getting carried away with all these stat boosts. I really like the item. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it kind of unfolds within the competitive scene. So Covered Cloak, this hooded cloak conceals the holder, protecting it from additional effects from moves. So as you can see, like if you're holding this item, if you get faked out, you're not gonna get flinched from the fake out, which is pretty cool. And uh, other kind of secondary effects as well, kind of makes you immune to those moves. So things like flamethrower with burn, I'm assuming, because it gives you that kind of conceals you from the secondary effect, you're not gonna be able to get burned anytime, which is a really nice item to have and gets around any of those secondary effects uh, that, that a move can kind of throw onto you. So especially this one, which the example here with the fake out from the Hariyama and you don't get flinched from it, that's pretty big. Next one is Loaded Dice. If a Pokemon holding this item uses a multi-strike move, that move will be more likely to hit more times. So the way I look at this item is it's a bit like an item that's comparable to Skill Link. Whether or not it's exactly like Skill Link, where Skill Link, you know, with multi-attack moves, it will always hit a maximum a number of times, I don't know if Loaded Dice is going to give you the maximum number of times every time or if it will just increase the chances of having a, having a higher amount of hits on those multi-strike moves. But pretty cool item as well. We did see the example here of uh, Breloom using Bullet Seed. It also confirmed that Breloom is going to be appearing in Scarlet and Violet, which I'm very, very happy about. I, I did tweet about it straight away. It was one of the first things I tweeted about uh, when I was watching the trailer. But uh, I think this item is really cool. Um, probably not going to be as as usable or maybe as useful or seen as much use as things like the Mirror Herb or Cover Clock, which seem to have a real use in competitive. But a uh, lot of dice definitely going to be there for things like Breloom, things like Cloyster and other Pokemon that rely on those kind of multi-target attacks as well. So that is that. Now, the other thing to talk about is the trailer here which is the trailer which we've discussed everything in there we've went a bit in depth that was the other thing released on the 21st of august so you can have a look at the whole thing and we did see some new pokemon as well in this trailer and the new pokemon was size lazar i think that's how i'm pronouncing it it is a mount pokemon a dragon normal type as well so really cool typing unique typing uh, has the ability to shed skin and you can see some more information about it down here. Um, it is theory that it is a pre-evolution of Creadon, Muradon, uh, 
we'll have to wait and see. I haven't got anything confirmed yet. A Pokemon that lives with humans. This Pokemon has lived in many households in Paldea region since ancient times. It has a mild disposition and people riding. Size Lazar are very common sight. It appears Size Lazar don't mind being ridden because of the warmth of the rider helps stave off the cold. Body optimized for running. Size Lazar can sprint over 70 miles per hour while carrying a human. It's extremely hard headed and thick. Lithe tail are not only useful for maintaining balance and absorbing shocks while sprinting, they also provide effective ways to which attack during battle. So this is kind of interesting and goes into detail about the uh, its, its body and what look like wheels, but they're not wheels. Um, and then it's got the new move. A new move was announced as well, which was in regards to Size Lazar. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Size Lizard or Size Lazar. Who knows who? It, it, which is the correct pronunciation whichever way probably pronouncing it wrong and I've said it a bunch of times already so I will apologize anyway the new move that we've got is shed tail this is an absolutely insane move so as you can see shed tail the user creates a substitute for itself using its own HP before switching places with a party Pokemon in waiting it's a combination of a pivoting move and a protection move in substitute. It's absolutely crazy that you can set up a sub, pivot out, and then give whatever comes in the substitute as well. So it's a really, really strong move. And um, I think it's gonna have a lot of use in the VGC or competitive format because of its uh, ability to kind of protect whatever is coming onto the field while also benefiting from that pivot out. Whether or not this is a signature move of just Size Lazar or not, who knows? Hopefully it has a bunch more Pokemon that can use it. Now, the other thing before we finish up today is a post that Victory Road put out yesterday. Now, it, it confused me a little bit, but I'm just gonna cover it just to confirm everything with everyone so everyone knows where we are with the new terrestrialize uh, transformations and these terror abilities and the possibilities with different terror types so victory road put out the japanese news feed on the nintendo switch confirms that all pokemon will be able to have any of the 18 types as their terror type in scarlet and violet and you can see here this is the information from the japanese news feed about this confirming that now i'm just going to hop back over to the Scarlet and Violet website, the news that we covered on the 3rd of August. Now it doesn't state this directly, but from the wording in the website, I was pretty much under the assumption um, and I thought everyone else was, but when talking to a lot of people yesterday and going over this news, having this confirmed kind of, there was like a big deal, like this hadn't been kind of said before, but I'm just gonna say that, you know, um, when you can see first, each Pokemon has a terror type, a Pokemon's terror type is inactive until the Pokemon terrestrializes, at which time the Pokemon's type will be changed to its terror type. For example, some Eevee will have a normal type terror type, but other Eevee will have a flying terror type. There, and this is what I mean, there are 18 types, meaning there are countless combinations of Pokemon and Terra types. Now I took that for verbatim that every type can have one of these 18 types. It doesn't say that definitively, but I guess now it has been confirmed in this newsfeed article from Japan about Scarlet and Violet. So we know that every Pokemon in the games is going to be able to have any of the one of 18 terror types as its terror type so pretty cool news but that pretty much wraps up everything that i wanted to cover in today's video so i hope you found it useful and interesting and please let me know down in the comment section below about these new moves these new items the new pokemon that we've got and the battle system that we're going to have in scarlet and violet i'd love to hear your thoughts on them all and what you particularly really took away from the trailer and what you're looking forward to out of these things that you'd be able to use i guess and um also about the 18 terror types, you know, uh, that are available on all Pokemon. Were you under the impression like I was, or is this news to you and this confirmation pretty exciting? Just a quick reminder, if you do enjoy this content, please remember to drop a like on the video. It does really help the video out. And if you want to stay up to date with all the latest Scarlet and Violet news and everything else in between regarding Pokemon, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you'll not miss a thing. And you will not regret it. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you all very soon for another video on the channel. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.